What's up, Mortgage Coach community? Today, I am interviewing Richard Milligan. Richard, what's up, my friend? Hey, Dave. I am, I'm doing good. Start of a week. Good. Yeah, I'm excited yeah, to no, be here. It's, it's Monday. It is the beginning. Well, we're moving into the middle of September 2019. And, and I just think it's getting more and more clear as a mortgage professional, and more specifically as a mortgage leader, that we need to be on LinkedIn uh, if you're building teams, if you're growing teams, and I, I follow you on LinkedIn. I particularly like the article you recently did, uh, Work Less, Recruit More. So uh, why don't you just, for anybody who hasn't heard me interview you, which I think this is the first time I've interviewed you publicly, I've interviewed you privately, you know, before, but, you know, give everybody a little bit of um, who you are, and then let's talk about that article. Yeah, so um, man, I spent 15 years, almost 15 years inside the mortgage industry, Dave. I uh, started out as a loan officer and then producing branch manager and eventually a, a divisional. Um, uh, and through like 2002 to 2000, beginning 2017, left, uh, left the industry to start a coaching, um, recruiting coaching organization. I think we're the only recruiting coaching organization that you know, specializes on just that. Uh, at the beginning of 2017. And so since that time, we've coached one-on-one -on -one, uh, about 400 uh, leaders in the mortgage industry. And over that one of time, besides, you know, the coaching piece, one of the things that we've, we, we've had to move towards to help our clients grow is to also teach leadership branding. And as part of that, LinkedIn's a huge part of leadership branding today. It really is um, the, the sweet spot to develop a leadership brand. And so, you know, that's, a real quick 50,000 foot view of where I've been. I built 21 teams inside the mortgage industry um, where I had two real distinct seasons. One season where I spent, you know, 11 years almost growing three teams and then three and a half years where I changed some things in my recruiting efforts and I grew 18 teams. So that's a, that's an abbreviated version of my story and journey to get to where I am today. Well, I, I love the term leadership brand. I recommend if you're a mortgage professional, you know, whether you're an individual loan officer, you're a branch manager, you're regional. I mean, we all need to build a leadership brand. And, and the thing I liked about this article, while you wrote it from a perspective of helping executives and managers in the mortgage space um, recruit and build teams, uh, I liked number nine in your systems, which was using mortgage coach content uh, as part of the process. I believe in that. But I thought equally important, if you want to grow the talent that you currently have, like number nine, you know, that strategy number nine is equally important. Like when I look at the, the companies and the leaders that are successful with Mortgage Coach, it's the ones that are leveraging content, the content we create, and they're promoting that to the right person at the right time. You know, I mean, I think that's building a leadership brand and promoting the right content at the right time in multiple channels. Sometimes that's an article on LinkedIn. Sometimes that's a message. Sometimes it's a text. Sometimes it's still an email. So speak to that, you know, like, why did you put Mortgage Coach as number nine in your systems? And then let's talk about all the ways that content can be promoted to recruit team members, realtors, and grow, the, grow both of them. Yeah, I, look, here's the pro, I always think in, in our business, there's always two things, right? There's either tension that we need to manage or a problem that we need to solve. And a problem that most people have to solve is that um, they individually aren't able to create content, right? Like I create a lot of content, you create a lot of content, but you know, if you're a loan officer or you're a branch manager, like creating content is, it's difficult for you to, to find the time to go create the content. And so I think that the, you have to have a value equation, right? It's like, if I wanna build a relationship with you, what is my value equation? How do I get to a place where like um, I've brought you so much value that you would lean in towards me, right? So I have to solve that value equation, but a lot of people just won't move towards the value equation, even though they understand there has to be one there to build a relationship because they're not able to create the content. So I think a, sh a slight shift from that is move away from trying to be the creator to being the curator. Like you already created the content. Like I've got a lot of great content out there that I've created. There's lots of people in this industry that are creating the content go find it and curate it. And if I come across your, your YouTube channel, which has 1400 plus videos on it, and I want to actually build a relationship with a real estate agent, 
there's content all over it that I can now go just curate and I can begin sending to that agent to say, came across this great video that mortgage coach did. And I thought of you when I saw it, check out minute 16, which had a script that you could be using. Right? So you got to, you got to understand there is a value equation to building social relationships. Right. And then on the flip side of that is don't give up by thinking you have to be a content creator, become the curator, become the identifier of the good content and be willing to share that. Cause that's easy. Yeah, I love that. And so a couple things for all you mortgage coach, leaders of the community, make sure you're using the search feature in our YouTube channel. It's like when you're in the channel, there's that little spotlight. You can search by the name of the leader, by the content. And then a lot of people don't know, and this is something I love that you do, and you told me about it last time I did a private interview with you. You're, you're calling out specific times. Like it may be a one hour video, but you're, you know, you're calling out a specific time and you're calling out a specific idea. Cause I think if you're going to be a good curator, it's got to be the right video with the right pre-framing and to make it easy for that. Um, I don't know that prospect or that team member to get to net it out. How do you, how do you do that? And kind of like just speak to that a little bit more for the community here. Yeah. You have to think like a marketer, right? The marketer's always thinking, what's my hook? So like one of the things I love about marketers is that um, they always have this idea, what's the one thing that I have to get the person to believe in order to buy my, to buy my product, right? So when you look at a video, you're thinking along the same lines like a marketer would, which is what's the one idea inside this video that if I shared it in an abbreviated form would have them actually leaning in and listening or watching the video or whatever it is that I'm sharing. So you do, it's kind of like what you said coming into this you know, bullet point number nine in your article, everybody's wondering what bullet point number nine in my article is now, right? And so you take the same contextualization around video and you share it. One of the things that YouTube has done that a lot of people don't know, Dave, is like, if I go to your YouTube channel and click on a video and I go to click and I click the share button right below the share, but once that box opens up, there's a little box you can check and you can actually say share at this moment. So if I said minute 16 and the 38 second mark is where that great idea is shared, I can click that one little box and it adds an additional piece to the URL to where when I share it with you, you immediately go to 16 minutes and 38 seconds. Love, love that. Guys, so the name of the article is Work Less, Recruit More. I'm going to put a link down below. So if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, there'll be a link to the full article. Uh, you know, he goes through what he calls, you know, the systems and the tactics. Uh, what got me and inspired me to do this interview was number nine, where you were talking about literally, again, this is recruiting a team member where you're, you're giving them some content with context, with framing, spoon feeding it, right time, right prospect. But again, I see all the most successful mortgage coach clients that have their loan officers who adopted us they're doing the same thing. You know, we're, we're identifying top producers that have influence within the organization. We're turning them into success stories. We're interviewing it. So we're, we're identifying success stories. We're packaging success stories. And then we're promoting them in, in super um, relevant ways that has context. So, so knowing the, well, let's put it this way. From my position, you are an expert at helping anybody create a leadership brand on LinkedIn. So why don't you just give some quick tips and ideas for the mortgage coach community? Because whether you're actually trying to get a team member or you're trying to be attractive to realtors in your market, I think your leadership brand ideas um, are on point. So if you don't mind giving some yeah. quick value there. Yeah, I think one of the, first you have to understand why you would do it. A lot of people kind of get like, you know, this general idea, I should be on social media, people should be able to see who I am. But you really need to understand the why. And when you know, we worked at a high level with four companies in 2018, one of the primary things that we worked on was their, their social leadership brand. The average of those four companies grew 41% um, in hires in the loan officer branch manager space. So in their sales hire space, the primary thing that they focused on was living out a leadership brand predicated on this idea of attractive leadership, 
right? So I, I believe that everybody wants to work for an attractive leader, right? Attractive leader has a clear vision, can articulate their core values very clearly, right? So having it's one thing, but being able to articulate it well is another thing. And then living and acting in alignment with that becomes the third component of that. So when you think about those three things, vision and values, being able to articulate those and living those out, that really becomes a social strategy for your leadership brand, right? Because I can talk about my vision and my values all day long. In fact, I can identify and document the moments where I'm living in alignment with those things. And I can, I can share that on social media. So a lot of people are like, man, I feel like I've got to be a thought leader. Or I got to have all these great ideas that I share. I got to be constantly creating these difficult videos. I say you don't have to. I think that if you are clear on who you are, and then you're documenting the moments where you're living those out, then you have a great social strategy for, for, for having this, this idea of, of a leadership brand. The thing that most people miss is that this is no longer about likes and comments, right? This is actually, there is this thing now called social proof. Like it's crazy to me, the consumers, because I'm, I'm 46 years of age, Dave, and so, you know, I can go back not that long ago. And I remember when there wasn't any social, I remember when my dad bought a car and wrote the check to buy the car before I ever met with the banker. It was all, it was all like a handshake deal, right? That this thing went down. And so we go, you know, those of us that are maybe my age or older, you know, you go back 10 years ago and like this entire concept that not just the consumer, but the real estate agent, the loan officer, whoever you're, doing business, whoever you're doing business with considers your online brand as social proof. It's the handshake that they need in order to be able to believe that you are who you say you are, right? And so the data is all over this, that this is what is true. So because we know it's true now, we no longer have the permission to not live out and a, a leadership brand. We have to actually solve that problem. How do we do it? So we, you know, our, our brand name is 4C Recruiting. So we developed an easy way to remember how do you do it around four C's. And so what we believe is this, you got to connect, right? So if I'm not connected to you, I'm not visible. So I have to start connecting to those people. If you're a loan officer, it's your real estate agents, your builders, it's the influencers that are around you, your MI reps, your title reps, whoever those are, you got to be connected to those. You know, if you're a branch manager or you're an area or regional or division, you want to recruit, you got to start by connecting to those people first, right? So you can always connect. The second component of that is that you actually have to have content. You, you know, having a blank canvas there is no longer neutral, right? Because like somebody will create a narrative for you. And so you have to be there creating your own narrative in control of your own narrative. And so you've got to deliver content. And again, understanding attractive leadership, um, it, you know, having the ability to articulate around your value system. If you don't understand what it is, you better start getting clarity as to that. You can simply write out half a dozen I believe statements, things that you already believe. Now you're moving closer to clarity around that. And then, you know, identifying and documenting the moments that you're living in alignment with that, that becomes your content strategy. The third component to that is then going to be the communication piece. How do you communicate to people as though they're the only person that you're talking to, right? And so that's where a lot of times I'm coaching people to, to use your content. Go get that interview with that top real estate agent that you, know, that you could share with all of your other real estate agents and say, wanted you to check this video out. This is a great idea of how she partners with her loan officer. Right? It's a great idea how she does open houses, whatever it is. Right. And so now I've got to go find the, this, uh, this content so I can communicate and bring value to you because that becomes the value equation. Right? I think that me connecting, if I'm representing attractive leadership and then I'm bringing value plus value plus value at some point that equals a conversion, right, where I, the conversion being a conversation. And, and so then, you know, I'm actually communicating to you as though it's to the audience of one. Then eventually at some point I can ask the real estate agent because that's recruiting. Or I can ask the real estate agent for a meeting. If I'm a branch manager looking to have a conversation with a loan officer, if I've brought enough value and I've created a value equation here that I think has brought a lot of value to you, then I can ask for a meeting or a short phone call and I'll get that short phone call. Too many people think of, of um, you know, building relationships and trying to move people to next steps completely from a sales position. And so they're really truly recruiters. And I think the shift is we take this, this recruiting cap and we retire it and we replace it with this relationship builder, this value builder hat. 
And the pers- the people that I see winning at scale, not just loan officers, but leaders inside the industry that are successfully recruiting, they're solving the value equation and they're, they're giving way before they ever ask for anything in return, right? And so it, it, it is about visibility by connecting and delivering content, but it's about relevancy. I wanna be relevant more than I wanna be visible. Like that's, there's a complete difference and most people miss that. Relevancy means that you and I are engaged in a conversation today. Visibility is something completely different. It's very surface, it has no roots, it has no substance to it. So guys, I wanna make this tactical for you right now. I want you to make a list. First, it starts with your leadership brand. Are you clear on your values? Are you clear on what you bring to the space? And I would say if you're a producing branch manager, whether you're trying to recruit a realtor or you're trying to recruit another loan officer, you have the same values. You have a similar mission. You might tell that story differently to different stakeholders, but, but it's the same mission and value. And I would say you need to have a LinkedIn profile. And to your point, it can't be a blank slate anymore. Having articles, having posts that make you an attractive leader is a competitive advantage, regardless of who you're trying to bring into your world. And then the other thing, if, if you are a leader and you have people on your team that you want to do things a certain way, you, you need to post with that in mind. Like when I am posting on social media, whether it's Facebook, whether it's LinkedIn, you know, one, I'm always trying to recruit new members. Let's get more people to the mortgage coach community. I'm always trying to get people who are part of our community, use our product and our platform more effectively. And you know what? I am super intentional. I'm training my team. You know, I am, I, some of the content, some of the interviews, some of the questions I ask, it's so I can take it back to my sales team. We go, guys, did you hear this? You know, at minute such and such. Um, to our success managers, hey, did you hear this interview? And I'm, sometimes I interview people just to help my internal team, and then I put it on social media. And it accomplishes all of those things. So, so I love some of the things that Richard got tactical on in terms of just um, how to create content, document what you're doing. So, Richard, I want to go into wrap-up mode. And I'm going to give you, I'm going to hand it off to you to make sure you cover, you know, tactically what came in this. Also, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan. I follow you on social media. Um, you know, some of my clients use you already. I have referred other clients to you because I think you do a great job of helping leaders get clear on their leadership brand and then use LinkedIn to, to grow that brand. But what's missing tactically? And then let's wrap it up with, Anybody who wants to connect with you outside of this interview, how they can follow you and, you know, talk to you if they want to. Yeah, I think practically, Dave, from this is um, how do you take, I always ask myself, how do I take that, how do I take an idea and how do I incorporate it into not just a theory, but something practical that I can use on a daily basis? So you have to have a, you have to have a larger system around this. Like, and so for a lot of people, it, ha- it becomes practical by saying, I'm going to do this on Monday, do this on Tuesday. You know, they have a, they have a defined um, uh, method that they follow. So maybe Monday is motivational Monday and, and maybe Wednesday in terms of their social leadership brand is, you know, recognition Wednesday, maybe Friday's fun Friday. And you can take who you are and what you represent. So as an example, a couple of my top core values to make it practical is family first. Right. And so I'm immediately because I'm clear on that looking for opportunities to identify and document where am I putting my family first or where am I helping the people on my team put their family first inside this brand that I'm growing. Right. One of my one of my core values is personal growth, personal development. Right. And so I'm always trying to solve that equation of like, how do I show people that I'm about personal growth and personal development and motivational Monday is one of those ways that I could actually identify, like I show up every single Monday and I write something that's motivational, almost like a mantra or something that helps lead into the week. And the rhythm of that makes it easier because it's part of a system. Anyone that doesn't have a larger system, they're showing up every single day and going, what am I doing for content? What does my leadership brand look like? And so defining the days and almost like a theme for the days I found has been helpful for people moving from just like this being an idea to actually being more systematic in their approach. And so I encourage people to do that. But the other thing is that people have to have a value equation, right? What is the value equation? Like where, like, like your channel is part of my value equation. I teach it like go to 
this place and get that. There are other places where you can go and you can get content. Where, where, are, where are your value equations? Where do they exist? And how do you actually map that across to someone that you want to do business with? Whether that's a real estate agent, whether you're a branch manager trying to develop a relationship with a loan officer, be methodical in your approach to it because the system, like I love what James Clear said in, in the book Atomic Habits, which is that we never rise to the level of goals that we set. We always fall to the level of system that we have. Right. And so the system is what's going to matter most in all of this. So, yes, from a practical theory standpoint, your leadership brand has to be there from a systems place. What does it look like on the, in the day to day? You actually need to map that out and have a strategy. So, you know, what, you, if, if someone wants to connect with me, you know, they can, you know, obviously I'm pretty active on LinkedIn. So you can drop me a, a DM on LinkedIn. Um, you know, we, we've got a pretty strong uh, game on Vimeo. I think we've got you know, 150 plus videos there. Same thing with YouTube. Um, we're not hard to find. Um, I've got a live calendar that people are, can find if they went to my LinkedIn page and looked hard enough. But, um, but yeah, I would love to where we can help. Um, one of our values is very similarly aligned with yours, Dave, which is that we just love bringing value to the community because we love the community so much. And uh, so you would be blown away by how many things we just actually give to people podcasts of my podcast recruiting conversations. We give away our best strategies there. I think we're on episode 32 this week. And so that's a big part of our value equation for us as well. Yeah, well, I'm a, I'm a fan of your content. You do a great job, Richard. Thank you for always giving so freely. Remember folks, you can find our video content by using the search feature. And you know what? You can also go to our Facebook group, mortgage coach productivity mastermind and just ask, you know, like, Hey, I, I'm building some content for some new loan officers. What's some of the best, you know, video content on training? And usually I will try to weigh in with a comment and some value. And we've got a very active community in our Facebook group. So if you want looking for mortgage coach content to deliver the most value at the right time in the right way, use mortgage coach. If you got value from this interview, give us a like. If you loved it, love it. Share it with your mortgage friends. Richard. Looking forward to learning more from you, my friend, and thanks for making time today. Appreciate it, Dave.